right, so I have just gotten out of the shower and I freshly cleansed my face, put on my skincare products, and I will list the things that I'm using. I've incorporated a few new things, so I will list what I have on my face as far as skincare wise is concerned. But today I am so excited because I got the new Anastasia Beverly Hills foundation sticks. I picked these up yesterday at my local Ulta, and they just came out within the last week or so. And I am super pumped about this because I have been wanting to try foundation sticks, but they're never really formulated for us gals and guys that have combination skin or oily skin. So these I think are made for normal to oily, which is really awesome because a lot of the foundation sticks out there in the market right now are more hydrating and give you more luminous dewy finish, which isn't something that a lot of people with oily skin look for, at, at least in my case. I don't like anything luminous or dewy in my foundation. So I'm super pumped about this. I picked up two different colors. I have the beige foundation stick, and then I also picked up the uh, shadow stick foundation. It says contour, so it's the shadow color. And it's just very classic for a twist up sort of mechanism for a stick foundation. So this is what the packaging looks like. Let me show you up close. Here is the Anastasia logo, love the packaging, and you can just sort of twist this off, and then here is the product, really, really nice. Now before I apply these, I do wanna say that they have done a good job, Anastasia has done a good job with helping the consumer find the right shade. They have created a nice color chart that shows the yellow tones, undertones, the pink undertones, olive undertones, and they've also sort of broken it down on their Instagram and also on, I've seen it on their Snapchat where they put the actual product on models and they have it categorized by fair, light, you know, medium tan, and then deeper skin tones. And within each of those categories, there's four different models so that you can really sort of see the difference between the tones in, for example, for me in the light category or if you're watching in, your fair, in the fair category, if you're dark or in the deeper skin tones, you can see the four different shades. And they have a ton of different colors. They are catering to the fairest of fair, to the deepest of deep, which those two ends of the spectrum obviously always get left out in foundation um, ranges for most brands. So it's really wonderful to see a brand really cater to most skin types or skin tones. <laughs> um, so we're just gonna test this out and do some check-ins. Oh, and these are $25 a piece. There are tons of different shades for the foundation and then there's three contour shades and then there's the banana also in a stick form so what we're gonna do is start by priming I'm gonna use the Too Faced hangover primer which looks like this this was a sample from Sephora and I have been enjoying this quite a bit so I'm gonna take just a tiny amount I don't really need a whole lot of this and I'm gonna rub this in all over now I do have a little bit of some texture issues. I started using the Sunday Riley Luna oil at night and the Good Jeans during the day, so hopefully that'll help with some texture problems. Okay, so I have my oval brush. This is the Emacs Design brush that I reviewed not that long ago. Love this. And I also have a Beauty Blender and the Beauty Blender with the blusher. And I think I'm gonna use the blusher for the contour. I don't know what is the best way to apply stick foundations because this is not normally what I go for or use. So I think I'm gonna do this side here with the brush and then maybe try this side with the beauty blender. Let's do the forehead first. Okay, does that look like it might match? In the viewfinder it does. Okay, so let's start with the forehead. I mean, I think it works really well regardless, honestly. That blended out pretty nicely. So let's do a little bit here, here, and then this feels so weird. Um, and it doesn't really cause a whole lot of dragging from the stick as you're applying it to your face. I don't even know if that's too much, but we'll see.
Okay, so I think that that's pretty blended. I will have to say that it is a very light coverage, or so far it feels kind of light. It doesn't feel sticky, it doesn't feel too drying. It feels comfortable, it feels like I'm not really wearing anything, which is nice. So I think I might try. Let's attempt to go a little bit more over some spots that I feel like I need a little bit more coverage. And let's see how we can get this to work. But so far, I think it's blending in quite nicely. I mean, it's really no trouble at all to get this to look even. Okay, so I do think a second layer is a little bit better. Okay. And this is a damp beauty blender. I've just put it under the water, wring it out, and wrap it really tight in a paper towel so that it's just barely damp. Because um, sometimes using a wet beauty blender is, it's great for foundation and blending things out, but sometimes it can give it a little bit more of a dewy look, especially if you're oily. So just make sure if you're going to use it, that it's um, just barely damp. Okay, so I think personally this color is, from what I can tell with these lights, I think it's a really, really close match to my neck and I'm happy with that. Um, I don't see a difference between using the beauty blender, <laughs> I forgot, the beauty blender and the brush. I think that they both work well. All right, so I've done my concealer and I'm about to set my concealer with the Cinema Secrets uh, Ultra Lucent Powder and I set this in the same way that I would do any other product. So I'm gonna use my beauty blender, the blusher, which is slightly damp. And I'm gonna set my under eye area and my eyelids, and that's gonna sort of serve as my primer for my eyeshadow. Just a little bit more. I'm gonna tap off some of that because I feel like I got too much, and I'm just gonna lightly just tap because I don't wanna remove anything that I have already applied. I'm just gonna kind of lightly tap and see if this changes anything with the foundation as far as longevity is concerned. All right, so now that we have just a tiny bit of powder over it, I'm going to do the contour, which I probably should have done before powder, but we're gonna see if this works over um, powder. And I have it, like I said, in the shade called Shadow. It's very light, and it's got that sort of cool tone to it, which is typical of uh, contouring products. Over here, so I'm gonna take just a little bit. This is so pigmented and so is the foundation. I'm gonna use the rounded underside of the Beauty Blender the Blusher and I'm gonna kind of pinch it just a little bit to really get in there. That's weird how it goes on quite gray, but when you blend it out, it doesn't really look gray. I mean, I feel like it does sort of slim out my face, and if you get a little too low with it, you can always go back in with some of the stick foundation and clean that up, but I think it's fine. Um, that blended out very easily. It feels, again, the same sort of texture as the foundation, so we'll see. I'm very hopeful. All right, so it's time for our first check-in. It is 4.08, and I applied the foundation at 11.30, so it's almost been about five hours already that I've had this foundation on. And honestly, my T-zone looks exactly like it did when I applied it. Nothing different there. I'm looking in the viewfinder as well. And it's really good in my T-zone. Now, in this area here, there is some kind of dewiness. Hopefully, you guys can see that. These lights do make everything a little bit more noticeable. Um, the glowiness, the oil production, kind of like that dewy finish are intensified by these big old lights that I have. So in person, it's really not that bad. However, I do feel like I could do some blotting at this point. I could use, if I was on the go, the Blotterazzi um, little sponge blotting things from the Beauty Blender brand. Or, you know, if I had some powder with me, I would probably use a translucent setting powder to touch up and not an actual face powder because I feel like that would be just too much. And it doesn't feel like I have much on my face, honestly. I feel like it's very lightweight and as you saw in the, in the application, it was pretty easy to apply and a little bit went a long way. Maybe if I would have done just one thin layer, maybe I could sort of keep a little bit more of a matte finish longer. 
And I'm also using the Too Faced primer, so I'm not really sure if the oiliness and dewiness that I have is attributed to this or the actual foundation. So I think I wanna try this foundation again with a mattifying primer underneath or maybe no primer and see how that works. And if I get a chance to do that, um, I will annotate the changes if there's any in the description box um, when I go to try it tomorrow. Um, but this is what it looks like. Absolutely no touch up. I didn't even touch up my lip. I am surprised that this lipstick is still on. It's um, the Essence lipsticks, the long wear ones. Um, so yeah, that's what it looks like after five hours. All right, guys. So we are now doing the final check-in. It is 8.23 or 24. And it has been about four, a little over four hours since my last check-in, but I've been wearing the foundation for a total of nine hours. I applied it, I believe it was 11.30 in the morning. And honestly, this foundation looks still pretty good. I do feel, like I don't know if you guys can see, but it's not as dewy on like this side of my cheeks. Um, just a tiny bit right here in my chin. And right in this area, right in here, is where most of my oil is. And my forehead is pretty fine. I don't feel like I need a touch up. I did add a little bit of highlight, so that's part of that glow that you might be noticing there. I did do a touch up after I did my 4 p.m. check in. And what I did was I used my e.l.f. complexion brush and a little bit of the Cinema Secrets Ultra Lucent Powder. I took whatever was in the cap which usually isn't much at all, and I'll show you. That's usually what you get in the cap um, if you have quite a bit of product in the container. So I just kind of tapped my brush, and I probably used about that much, and just sort of lightly pressed it in my cheek area. I didn't really do anything on my nose. I didn't touch up my forehead or my chin with the product. So honestly, I mean, I think that if I hadn't done the touch up, with that little bit of translucent powder, I probably would have looked a lot oilier at this point, nine hours in. I mean, I can't really complain, really. Honestly, nine hours later and having just a minor oil production happening here that's sort of coming through the foundation is pretty awesome because I can tell you how many times I have tried a foundation hoping that I could find one that actually works. And then you find out that, you know, with oily skin, it just sort of breaks down everything, every powder, every foundation and I'm surprised that this still looks really nice even though I do have a little bit of oil and it is time for me to blot it does look very even and very smooth and I still have that coverage that I had when I applied it it hasn't sort of in a way kind of disappeared throughout the day I know that that's something that does happen sometimes with some formulas I'm glad that this worked uh, I didn't know what I was getting into with these sticks uh, I didn't know if it was gonna be too drying for my skin or if it wasn't gonna hold up but honestly for me to go as long as I have with just this amount of oil and this is the same amount of oil that I had at the I think it would be around right around the same amount of oil that I had at the four hour mark so you know what nine hours later I'm mad at it honestly <laughs> so I do enjoy these and this is a side here that I use the brush and then this is a side that I use the dampened beauty blender and honestly the oil production that I have on both sides is pretty equal I wouldn't say that one is more oily or dewy looking than the other I have experienced using the Beauty Blender Damp with other foundations and had a kind of oilier appearance on that side of the face versus using a brush, whether it's this one or a foundation brush. Um, so I am really surprised that this is actually like this. I mean, I'm, pr I'm, pretty, I'm pretty impressed with this. I mean, I really cannot complain. I do have to do some touch-ups, um, but it's not that big of a deal because I'm about to go wash my face and get ready for bed. So I hope that you guys found this helpful with these check-ins and if I try this foundation um, over the weekend before posting this video because this will be Monday's video I will leave some notes at the bottom in the description bar if I try it with a different primer if I try it setting it using a damp sponge into translucent powder and pressing it in like I usually do see if that alters it so that it could help you out just in case because I didn't really pack on a whole ton of product or powder over this and I'm impressed I do think that if if you have some oil, you might enjoy this foundation. Don't, don't forget to um, 
use a little bit of setting powder. And also, one quick note, just because this is formulated for normal to oily skin doesn't mean that someone of drier skin can't use it. If you like the consistency and you want to try because of the positive reviews that are out there, if there are any, because I, I don't really know. This is a brand new product. So if this does pique your curiosity and you have drier skin, then what you can do is use some beauty oil um, on your face first, then going in with this, use hydrating products, hydrating mists, forego the powder products, and stick to just creams, and you could make something like this work. It's not something that is an absolute no-go for someone of drier skin. It is going to be a drier consistency as opposed to more dewy, luminous liquid foundations, but it's something that you can manipulate the formula to make it work for your drier skin if that is something you're interested in. So thank you guys so much for spending your day with me. I hope you found it helpful. Please give it a thumbs up, like the video, and also don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this in the future, and don't forget to follow me on Twitter. Instagram and Snapchat, and I will see you very, very soon. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.